Good day, Mike. First of all, let me thank you for agreeing to do this video interview with me today over Zoom. Thanks, Guy. I'm uh, excited to talk to you today. Thank you so much. I really appreciate this. I've been meaning to do this for quite a while. You and I have been connected on uh, social media for for a while. It's not been uh, over a decade or whatever, but I've been following you. You you bring to the party all sorts of great stuff, and uh, I encourage everybody to begin to follow you if they're not doing that already. For our audience, can you please introduce yourself to get us started? Yeah, my name is Mike Taylor. I am a learning consultant, and uh, I've been pretty fortunate. I, I, Cliff Notes version is anything that touches training or learning at some point or another, I have, have worked with it. So kind of a, a jack of all trades in the L&D space. And a master of a lot of that too, I uh, might add. Uh, let's, <laughs> let's start. So uh, where did you grow up? I grew up in Southern Ohio. So uh, Chillicothe was where I was born and raised. I live, um, I always tell people I had one foot in and one foot out of Appalachia. So a colorful upbringing with uh, a lot of different influences. Very cool. So where did you go to college and what did you study? Uh, I went to Miami University for undergrad, got a bachelor's in business with a management information systems minor. And then I went to, soon after that, I went to Ohio University to get an MBA. And then about 10 years after that, I went to San Diego State all online for a, uh, a master's in learning design technology. Oh, very cool. You've got a very uh, you've got a business uh, heavy uh, background. That's uh, that's very cool. So I, I imagine that uh, uh, impacts how you look at the world of learning and training and all of that. But uh, so tell us a little bit about uh, where do you live and work now? So I work for a small consulting company in Columbus, Ohio. I live in Worthington, so that's kind of on the, the northern side of, of Columbus. And uh, let's cover your career progression. So you, you got your business degrees and it took you then 10 years and then you took this uh, courses at uh, San Diego State. I guess Allison Rosette was there, so you probably uh, are very familiar with her. But so, so let's pick it up from you know, well, let's go back to, you know, why did you go and get a degree from San Diego State what, instead of sticking with business? Yeah, so um, I had already sort of switched over to training and, and teaching and learning stuff prior to that. Um, huge, huge fan of Allison and, and everything that she's done. So I really hit the jackpot uh, by having her as a professor for a number of classes. So that was really, really fortunate. But, you know, I've always been somebody who's energized by the process of learning. Even when I was in school as a kid, you know, I wasn't the one who was like, I can't wait to get out of here. I'm like, you know, this is actually, this is not so bad. And, you know, my family, they make fun of me. If we're traveling, they, they see the historical markers. They're like, dad, there's a sign. You got to go read it to learn what happened. <laughs> so, so I'm just energized and always have been by, by the process of learning. And I think, you know, a lot of that is just some um, inherent curiosity that, that, that I have that kind of has pointed me in this direction. So after you got your MBA, what, where did you go to work? And then let's try to figure out how you segued into yeah, yep. and development. Yep. So I started off, my very first job was a programmer. Um, loved the logic and the problem solving of that, but couldn't handle the solitude. So, you know, you, they lock you away in a closet for a couple of months and you come out when you're finished and that, that didn't really suit me very well. So from there, I, I got to the point, I was there six or seven years, I got to the point where, you know, I knew this wasn't what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. Uh, I left there to go take a teaching job, the adult education at the local vocational school. Did that for a year. They had a software training uh, area. So like, that sounds pretty interesting. So I moved over, started doing some software training. That's about the time I moved to Columbus, worked for a, a bigger software training company for a few years. And it kind of just started as a progression of, okay, well, I can facilitate this stuff. Let me see if I can design it and put it together and do some of the instructional design. And then that led to, well, there's this online stuff. I think I could build some of that stuff. And it just sort of, to me, it seems like a natural progression of, you know, from facilitating to designing instructional design to online development. And just that's sort of the, 
the path that, that got me ultimately to where I'm at today. Thank you for all of that. Um, can you share with us, our audience, uh, some of the more interesting uh, things you've worked on in your career that uh, relate to learning and development, training and development? Yeah, you know, I've been really, really fortunate to, to have a pretty broad spectrum of, of experiences. So one of the things that's been super valuable is I spent about two years working for Articulate in their e-learning heroes community. So Tom Kuhlman and David Anderson and tons and tons of really great people over there. And I've seen, I've gotten to see a lot of things, good, bad, everywhere in between. So that's been really, really fortunate. Uh, I spent over a decade at a power company here in town. So American Electric Power. I started in the IT world. Uh, I kind of half jokingly say that I managed to escape that. <laughs> and uh, I went to work for, for the part of the company that ran the power plant. So super fascinating. 99% uh, of the world doesn't realize the complexity and, and uh, just the um, incredible things that happen to make your light switch turn the light on when you flip it. So uh, really big, so huge, big, slow moving battleship at a utility company. Moved to Articulate, which was 100% remote before that was a thing. And, uh, you know, now I'm at a consulting company. So I've had big giant companies, small agile companies, uh, IT stuff, technical stuff, uh, digital marketing things. I worked at a startup for four or five years. We did a lot of digital marketing and, and sales teams work. So I feel blessed to have that sort of broad spectrum of experiences. So what kind of consulting are you doing now without naming names or uh, specifics, but what kinds of uh, projects do you work on? Well, as I said earlier, sort of anything that comes in the remote area of training, learning, and development. What I'm working on right now I'm, I'm excited about is uh, we're doing some onboarding for Cleveland Clinic. So they've got a set of core values. We're doing some onboarding things and we're doing some campaign elements to that. So for example, one of the courses, they are asked to make sort of a personal pledge around inclusion and they submit some, some, you know, some of their thoughts around that. And then we capture that and we send it back to them 90 days later. We say, hey, you made this pledge up here. How's it going? So we're trying to take it from just the one and done to make it an ongoing, uh, sort of a campaign approach to it. So the people up there are really fantastic and, and I'm excited to see how that all plays out. Very cool. Can you tell us a little bit, of, so the name of this video series is HPT Videos, uh, Human Performance Technology, at least that's how I typically refer to it, but it's known by many different things, HPI, Human Performance Improvement, or Performance Technology, or just plain old Performance Improvement, or Evidence-Based Practices for Performance Improvement, lots of different names. I probably uh, uh, done a disservice to everybody by uh, using so many different ones. But so you seem to be a performance oriented kind of guy. It's all about performance out, back out on the job. Um, so where did you first get exposed to this? And can you tell us a little bit about it? And how do you refer to all of this? Yeah, I, you know, first of all, I think I was first sort of made aware of that through Allison and in grad school. So when I say hit the jackpot, I mean, I really, really do think that. I know there's a lot of people go to grad school who don't have somebody like that sort of enlightening them the way that, that she did with me. So, um, you know, I, I don't, I think human perform whatever the technology is, right? Like, I think it really gets down to, right? Everything that we do in, in learning is we're trying to be as effective and efficient as possible. And it has to be towards that goal of, you know, what are the goals of the business? Because we can do all these other sort of side things off to the side. And if it's not towards the, you know, the business purpose, then it's, it's more than likely going to be for not. So um, I don't know that I have a really favorite term. I think it has to be in context of who you're talking to. So instead of using L&D language, you should be using their language. And I think when you start pulling out those terms, it doesn't really help us necessarily all the time. Yeah, save your jargon for our own conferences, but talk in the language of your customers, that's the best. Uh, yeah, exactly. Given that advice a long time ago, and I think that uh, certainly holds true. So so besides Allison, can you name for our audience so that they might you know, follow up and, and check on people or books or articles that, uh, that you might guide them to uh, as people enter into the field? 
Yeah, for sure. So some of some of the ones that are top of my list, um, Richard Mayer, who was on your uh, video here a couple weeks ago, uh, the book he did with Ruth Clark, uh, e-learning and the science of instruction is one that, you know, I recommend to everybody who will listen. Um, you know, I, I think some of the some of the things that are older are still really good and valid. Like so Gilbert's behavior engineering model, you know, just having an understanding of all of the factors that go into performance and how training is just one small slice of that. Yeah. Uh, you know, one of the favorite, one of my favorite things is, is the, uh, the flow chart from Mager and Pipe's book, mm -hmm. uh, analyzing performance problems. Like that should be on everybody's wall. Yeah. It's just so fantastic. Um, you know, and then, you know, people today, so people like Patty Shank and Will Talheimer, the things that they do and translate research, um, you know, what you and Miriam have done with these L and D giant videos are really great. Uh, Paul Kirshner, who she, who she has her blog with. So those are some of the people that are uh, putting out a lot of good things today. Yes. Um, so if you were to give us a 30 second elevator speech, you currently do, I normally set this up saying you're at a neighborhood party. There's a new neighbor. They don't know you or what you do. And, and they say, Mike, what do you do? How do you explain? Yeah, so <laughs> I think that I've got two versions. I've got the short and the super short. So the super short is, is you know, work smarter, not harder. And and the little bit longer than that is, is really, you know, what I do is, is merge learning, design, and technology in a way that makes learning and work better and more efficient. Oh, I like that. Very good. Thank you. As a lifelong learner, you know, where are you currently focused uh, or what's your next focus for learning? Yeah, so I'm really fascinated and I've been fascinated this for a while. I've spoke about this and written about this a little bit, but I, you know, I think there is a lot to be gained no matter what your profession is, is from looking to other fields. So one of my big things that, that I've recognized is marketing has a lot of things that we should be borrowing and, and applying ourselves. So if you, if you think about it, us and marketing are both trying to get people's attention and they're pretty distracted, right? So we've got the same, same challenges and that goes, and we're both trying to get people to do something or do something differently. And so I think a lot of what marketing has done as a whole, not, not everything, but, but a lot of things, I think marketing in, in a lot of ways do it generally better than we do. Yes. So are you, uh, are you writing anything in particular? Are you working on your own books or articles and blog posts? And so what kind of themes and, and focus do you have for, for your writing? Well, so my, my biggest thing is, is um, I wish I had more time for that stuff. That's, that's always a goal. So my biggest thing is every Friday is, is the newsletter that I put out. So typically I, I read every morning. So I'm up early before kids and dogs and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and read a lot over coffee. And then I sort of curate that stuff and find, you know, five of the best things I read, five new tools, that sort of thing. And then every Friday, I, I publish that as a, as a newsletter. So on behalf of uh, some segment of the world here, how in the heck do you accumulate or, or curate all of these tools in this daily email that I'm uh, subscribing to. What, where do you, where, where's all that come from? Where's the treasure chest that you found and you're yanking these things out uh, handfuls at a time? Yeah, so, you know, I've been evolving this sort of curation process for, oh gosh, it's going to be over a decade now. And I've gotten to the point where I've identified, identified some pretty rich sources and I've gotten my process pretty lean and efficient. Uh, two, if, if anybody is looking for tools and software, which seems to be a pretty popular thing, two really great places to, to, to look at are uh, Beta List and Product Hunt. So those are a lot of things. Um, a lot of the tools I find come from there. And then I also get a lot of things from just following people like, like you and other L&D people and just keeping up with what they're doing. And I surface a lot of things, just what people are actually using. So that's that's usually the most valuable source. I'm, I'm guessing that you get up really, really early to accomplish all of this stuff and hold down a job and do the family thing and all of that as well. 
Um, uh, my next question um, is about our terminology. And I'm asking, is there a performance improvement term or phrase that you would like to define for us? And perhaps you, you feel it's being misused or misconstrued and you want to put your spin on it, or it's just a, a, a term that is part of your favorite of all the terminology that we have in our business. What do you have for us? Well, that's really tough. Um, without spending all day thinking about it, I, I think one that sort of comes to the top of my mind is, is one that I sort of unearthed early on. It's also one that applies to everyone, not just learning people. And it's, it's Mayer's multimedia principle. And there's a, a dozen or so principles that are out, out of that uh, line of thinking. But, but the multimedia principle just tells us that don't put all your text on the slide and don't read the text. Make things visual, reduce the text. And I see that almost everywhere I look. And I think, especially people in our field, you know, that seems like a, a pretty basic foundational thing that we should all be knowing and, and apply that to everything we do. Good point, yes. Um, let's, uh, this next question is a chance for you to do shout outs or recognize people who have been influential to you in your development. Um, so you've, you've mentioned Allison, a couple other people, but uh, so what I'm trying to do is help people new to the field follow individuals uh, or, and uh, their output um, so that they can help themselves in, in self-development. So, uh, so it doesn't have to be somebody that's well known, you know, but uh, who would you recognize? Well, um, this, this could be a long list, so I'll try to keep it to somewhat As short. long as you want it. That, that doesn't matter. We're <laughs> under no time constraints here. Okay, well, that's good to know. So, you know, people like Jane Hart, talking about tools, talking about modern workplace learning, um, you know, alternative ways to, to do things uh, in, in that sense. Harold Jarkey, the whole, a lot of stuff he's, he's written uh, about around personal knowledge management and curation and organizational work. Um, Mark Britz is somebody who I really love the, the take he takes on organizational uh, development, learning, training, that sort of stuff. Uh, seems like everything he writes resonates with me really loudly and clearly. Um, let's see who else. Miriam is, is fantastic. And, and um, Michelle Ockers and a couple Australian, her and Helen Blunden, people that are sort of working and learning out loud. Uh, Connie Malamed. Um, back to my articulate days, I learned boatloads of things from, from Tom Kuhlman and David Anderson. Super, super smart uh, guys. Um, let's see, see if anybody, Paul Jocelyn. He's a, he's a guy that, that writes a lot of good stuff around organizational learning. And uh, J.D. Dillon has a really good takes on, on some things. I could probably sit here all day and, and start naming stuff. Those are hey, those are probably the should, top ones. Yeah, maybe I should catch you off here before. <laughs> I, I, mentioned Pat, I, I mentioned Patty Shank and Will Talhammer. I can't forget those guys. Yeah. Well, all great people. Uh, and I, I would encourage our audience to uh, follow these folks. Um, there's a lot to be learned and a lot of experience to learn from. Um, Mike, thanks so much for participating in this video interview with me today. My final question to you is what parting words of wisdom or guidance would you have for our, our audience, especially those who are new to the field related to all things performance improvement? Yeah, I, I think a lot of us kind of come to this field accidentally. Like there's not very many people I've ever met that sort of grew up wanting to do this and went to school for that. And, there's one person that ever that I've ever met. And so it's pretty common that people come to the field, especially when they're new and they're doing a lot of things intuitively or what they've seen others do. And so, you know, my thing is, is take some time to, to ask some questions and, and either confirm that your intuition is right or disprove and, and learn, you know, what may be better based on research from a lot of those folks we talked about. And then just share what you learn. I think that's a big thing. And that's, I think as a field, we're really good at that. 
and I know I've benefited from it. I often hear people say, well, you know, I don't know anything or I'm a nobody. But the reply that I have to that is if you're learning things and you just share what you learn, somebody can get value from it. And you don't have to be like a super genius. You can just be yourself. And, uh, you know, that benefits not only yourself, but it benefits everybody in the field. And that would be what I would encourage everyone to do, not even just uh, newcomers. Exactly. Thank you so much for that. Uh, and thanks again for agreeing to do this and for sharing with us today. Have a great week. Hey, thanks. It's, it's great to talk to you. Bye-bye.